Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to talk about literature. We're going to talk about men and women of letters. And we're going to try to make you a better man or woman of letters. No, we're not. But we are going to talk about the fact that the word literature comes from the Greek word for letters. And we use letters in algebra. We use them as variables. And when we combine several letters into an equation, we call it a literal equation. And we're going to see examples of using literal equations with the percentage equation and with geometric formulas. So a literal equation is just an equation with several letters in it, several variables. And it could have all variables and no constant numbers, like a equals b minus c. And we can manipulate that just like we manipulate any algebraic expression. For instance, if I wanted to solve it for c, if I wanted to find out what c was in terms of a and b, I just use some algebra. I could subtract a from both sides of the equation and I get 0 equals b minus c minus a. And then I could add c to both sides of the equation and I get c equals b minus a. So I would have changed the equation and solved it for c. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, I'm asked to solve this equation for x, which means I need to isolate x. I need to get it to read x equals something. So I've got to get rid of two things that are kind of impacting the, the value of x. I've got a 2 times x, and I've got a plus 3. And I always want to get rid of the pluses and minuses first, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. When I do that, I get 2x equals z minus 3. Now I've got to get rid of that 2, and that's 2 times x. So the inverse operation is to divide by 2, when I divide both sides of the equation by 2, I get x equals z minus 3 divided by 2, or x equals 1 half z minus 1 and a half. By now you know a number of geometric formulas, and here's one you probably know. Area of a triangle equals 1 half the base times the height. Well, that's really a literal equation, isn't it? I've got three variables, a, b, and h, and they're in an equation form. And this equation, or this formula, would help me figure out what the area of a triangle was if I knew the base and I knew the height. But what if I knew the area and I knew the height, but I didn't know the base, and I was, I was asked to solve for the base? How would I do that? Well, I can manipulate that equation and solve it for the base. I'd first want to get rid of that 1 half, so I could multiply both sides of the equation by 2, and then I get 2 times the area, or 2a, equals the base times the height. Now I'm trying to solve for b, trying to isolate b, so i got to get rid of that times the height. So I divide both sides of the equation by h, and I get 2a divided by h equals b. And with that equation, if I knew the area and I knew the height, 
I could figure out what the base was. You try this one. We've got a formula for the circumference of a circle. The circumference equals pi times the diameter. We'll express that in terms of d. Solve for the diameter. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. This is pretty easy. I've got c equals pi times d, and I'm trying to solve it for d, for the diameter. So I've got to get rid of that pi, which is being multiplied by d. In order to get rid of a pi being multiplied by d, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by pi. Then I'm going to get c over pi equals pi times d divided by pi, or the circumference divided by pi equals the diameter. Try this one. Well, we've got a rectangle, and we know the base, and we know the area, and they're asking us to calculate the height. The formula is A equals B times H, and I'm going to try to solve for H. So I've got to isolate H. I need to divide both sides of the equation by B in order to do that. And I get A divided by B equals H. Well, now I can substitute my 60 for my area and my 15 for my base. And I'll get 60 square inches divided by 15 inches equals my height. And 16 divided by 15 equals 4 inches. Let's talk about percentages for a minute. You all understand that the part is some percentage of the whole. And you know how to calculate that. The part divided by the whole equals the percent. Now hopefully you remember that when you divide the part by the whole, you end up with a decimal as your answer. And you have to convert that decimal to a percent by multiplying by 100. Well, you can eliminate the need for that conversion if you set up the percentage problem initially as a proportion or a ratio. For instance, we could say that the part is to the whole as the percent is to 100 percent. Let's look at an example. Let's say that the part was 2 and the whole was 10. I could say that the part is to the whole, 2 is to 10, as the percent is to 100 percent. Now, Back to literal equations. I can take the cross product of this to simplify the solution to this problem. I could say that the part times 100 equals the whole times the percent. And I could rewrite our problem as 2 times 100 or 200 equals 10 times the percent. Or 20 equals the percent. You try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. Well, let's set up a proportion in order to solve this problem. 768 is 48% of what number? Well, we could say that 768 is to what number as 48% is to 100%. Now I can cross multiply and I'll get 768 times 100 equals 48 times x or 76,800 divided by 48 equals x or 1600 equals x. 70, 768 is 48% of 1600. Well, that's our lesson on literal equations. I hope you learned a lot. Now it's time to test your knowledge. Go to www.mastermath.info and try the worksheets and quizzes you'll find there. 
Well, I hope you had a good time, and I hope we see you again real soon.